he is telling his people that when they strike you on the right cheek, give them the other. It's a beautiful teaching for a subject people. More especially when they're being ruled by the Romans. And if they try to do anything, they'll be crushed heavily. They'll be killed. The Roman army was in Palestine, ruling the Jews. So, under the circumstances, turn the other cheek. And jane do. If they make you to walk one mile, walk with him too. If they take your coat, give him your cloak also. For the occasion, beautiful teaching. Which they wanted to give to us. You know, the Christians. They wanted to give that to us. When they conquered this territory, this undivided, you know, subcontinent, when they conquered it, the British, they were pouring in the missionaries into this subcontinent like frogs in the rainy season. Their missionaries were coming and challenging our people to convert us because they feared us. Because they feared that at any time anybody will give them trouble, it will be the Muslims. But if we can convert them to Christianity, teach them to turn the other cheek, we can rule this subcontinent for a thousand years. Everybody plans for a thousand years. Hitler planned for a thousand years. For wood, in South Africa, that philosophy of apartheid, thousand years. Everybody says, you listen to me, thousand years. So they came for a thousand years. It didn't work. However, that's a different story. So, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam says, is the responsibility that one carries makes him great, how great he is. The responsibility of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam is only for the Bani Israel. He's catering for the needs. The teachings are not fit for mankind. You can't implement them. Beautiful words. You can't implement it. In practice, is impractical. I'm asking, them, come, come, man. I like to meet people who are prepared to turn the other cheek. Where are they? Is that how you conquered my land? Is that how you got conquered Indonesia? Is that how you conquered the, uh, uh, the whole of Africa? By turning the other cheek? But no, no, it's good for the subject people. If we can be programmed, nice, humble, loving, loving, love. They talk about love. I just got this something here. Um, one young man comes along, while seated here, he said, you see, the Christians are giving this door to door. Going door to door. There's every home crusade. They don't sit and wait. They're going door to door. Beautiful, beautiful posters. Beautiful poster. This is a heart. And little, little ones, children, all different races. Some Arab child there and some Eskimo child there and some Indian child there. According to the dressing you make out. They are all going towards this heart. Big heart. And it says here, what everybody needs is love. Love. And it says, only Christianity gives love. At one time, of course, we understood love means sex. Well, if that is so, it's very true. <laughs> very true. No, no, sex. Because the Christian, look, he's prepared to give his daughters. To the Pakistanis, before I came here, one of the reasons, oh, let me correct Mr. Bawani, he had said that the Saudi Red Crescent Society invited me. That is not correct. I have come at the invitation of, of Muslim aid, the body called Muslim aid. So, the day that I get the message from Peshawar, come, come, Mr. Didat, same day I get another letter from Saudi Arabia, from Riyadh. An Englishman who had become Muslim, a revert to Islam, come back to Islam, alhamdulillah. He says, Mr. D. Dad, I met you when you were in Riyadh, and after that I had my vacation, and I went to Pakistan. As a new brother in faith, he wants to be among the Pakistani brethren. And he says, at some small gathering, I spoke about how I came to Islam. And in the gathering, there was a Pakistani with an English wife who had accepted Islam. So at the end of it, she suggested, they said, look man, there are other Pakistanis who have British wives, but they're not converted. Would you not like to come and speak to them? Yeah, the man is game. He said, look man, I don't mind sharing with them. So they organized another meeting in Karachi. So eight Pakistanis with their eight British wives, they turned up with three missionaries. Eight 
Pakistani men, supposed to be Muslims, with eight Christian wives and three missionaries. And this poor fellow was given a hard time. He said, look, I didn't bargain for that. You know, he said, look, I am a simple Muslim new convert. And I was trying to share with them, but they took me to task. I said, I couldn't believe that the Muslims of Pakistan are going wholesale for these British women and leaving them where they are. This is amazing, amazing situation. You see, our people, they, they reason. Flimsy reasoning. They say Islam allows us to marry Jewesses and Christian women. So, our alim ko maine pucha, is ha gunjaish hai. You know, there is a. No, no, this is exact word. I can't translate. I don't know. I, I, I don't think I can have a word in English, you see. Ek gunjaish hai. To kaman liya. I believe that. Gunjaish hai. But I say, you see, the idea behind a Muslim marrying a Jewess and a Christian woman was there that everybody, the whole society was geared to change that woman. The whole society. If my son brought a Christian woman, I am interested in converting my daughter-in-law. Ki beti, kya baat hai? Come, you know, look man, we want you to be a Muslim. And on. My, my wife will be interested. Her sister-in-law, everybody in the house, the neighbors, everybody. What happened? You're not Muslim yet? Huh? You're not Muslim yet? What's wrong? Hmm? Everybody is geared for that. That was the Muslim. But we are not that anymore. We have accepted Western norms. Where we say, look, mind your own business. If I start talking today to my daughter-in-law, if she happens to be Christian, my son will say, Daddy, keep out of this. Look, she's my wife, and you don't come in between me and her. I made the choice. And Islam allows. Khalam. Everybody, anybody, I say, look, mind your own business. We know this is my business. This is your business. Wallah. My wife, and you don't come in between me and her. I made the choice. And Islam allows. Khalam. Everybody, anybody, I say, look, mind your own business. We know this is my business. This is your business. Wallah. It's not like in the Bible. You see, we are told that Kabil and Abil, Brothers, Hazrat Adam and Hassan ki do bete, Abel and Kabil. Says Kabil killed Abel, Cain killed Abel. And the Bible says that God questions Kabil, where is Abel? So he replies in the Bible, he's not contradicted. He said, Am I my brother's keeper? Ki kya me mera bhai ka charwa ha hu? You know, am I looking, am I a shepherd after my brother? You're asking me? In Islam, we are our brother's keeper. Anything wrong that you are doing, I have every right to talk to you. If I am doing anything wrong, you have every right to talk to me. Correct me. We are each other's keepers, each other's guardians, protectors. Welfare, brothers. Not just Musa Kedia, well, mind your own business. My business is to mind your business, and your business is to mind my business, to see Islamically that we are going right. So, Today, we are not what we were supposed to be. Nobody is. With these Western ideas, that woman must be given her freedom. Yes, beautiful. Freedom, everybody must have freedom. You want to worship men, monkeys, elephants, snakes, you have the freedom. But my son, my daughter, no, no, I want to see that they are not led astray. You have the freedom. No religious interference. Allah tells us, like Rahafid Deen, there is no compulsion in religion. No compulsion, because it's worthless. At the point of the sword, the gun, or economic for enforcement, you force a person to accept Islam, it's worthless. No compulsion. But when you bring a Christian wife, and you say you love her, I know every, those eight guys, if they are around here, or if they hear one day this message that I'm giving now, you talk to them and you meet them, ask them, you love this woman? They said, yes. You prepare to die for her, I said, I'll give my life. I'll, I'll, I'll climb the Himalayas. Anything for my dear British wife. Anything. Anything I'll do for her. Jannat ki hoor, hume ya muwaya sar ho gai. Say, why wait for the other side? We got her here now. Yes. Hoor, hoor, hoor. Yaha milti hai to kyo raha dekhenge hum. 
So I said, you love her. Oh, yes, you love her dearly. I says, you know, this woman, tell them, tell them, tell these misled brothers of ours that do you know she is still a Christian? He said, yes. She's Ahlul Kitab. He said, yeah, she's Ahlul Kitab, but she's going to go to hell. Not that I want her to go to hell, but look, Allah says, Allah says in the Quran, Whosoever says that Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is God, is making kufar. It's an act of blasphemy. It's a treason against Allah. The worst sin in the sight of Allah is this, treason against Allah. In the state, we make certain mistakes, you know, crossing the barrier line, don't respect the robo signal, do so many things. We are